that's where this agenda item came from, is to come up with a new personnel policy manual that Poolpack, your insurer, our insurance company, agreed to, and it was also agreed to by the trustees. Mr. Gene only said he would have it in, the, in a month or two. That was March 27th. This does not cover what we need. It, I know it doesn't cover what the trustees have asked for. Um, in it is uh, employment of relatives. No officer appointing authority of White Pine Historical Railroad may employ in any capacity on behalf of the White Pine Historical Railroad Foundation any relative of such a person who is within the third degree of consanguinity. Thank you. Or affinity. Apex A is a chart that defines the degree of consanguinity and affirmative. <laughs> Existing employees may continue in their current job. Here's a chart of affinity and Mark's wife should not be working there. I know you're all laughing because I'm very nervous. Yesterday I was threatened. Um, so anyway, Gladine Petraeus in a railroad ad hoc committee, Joan Bassett working as a bookkeeper for Mark Bassett, Northern Nevada, Northern is nepotism. A totally unbiased individual needs to be hired for her job. That was addressed at the uh, railroad ad hoc committee meeting. I sent a letter asking the auditors if there was a problem. We had four, uh, I call them red flags with the auditors. This is the answer they gave me about uh, Mark's wife working with them. And it's from uh, Hinton Burdick, the auditors. When family members are employed in the same organization, it does create additional risk. That has to be considered by the board as well as the independent auditors. And I think I wrote, have copies of this if anybody wants it. We can get there. Also in this um, policy manual was political activity. Um, employees shall not engage in political activity of any kind during working hours. This includes but not limited to soliciting money, influence, service or any other valuable thing to aid, promote, or defeat any political committee. In a meeting, when, when the first questions came up about uh, the railroad that the trustees put forth in, in January, there was all kinds of rumors. Newspaper articles uh, saying we're going to close down the railway. Um, <coughs> you know, rumors and rumors and rumors. Mark, uh, Mark wrote a letter to the newspaper, and then he paid the employees, his employees, to come to the meeting to support the railroad so it didn't get closed down. That was just ridiculous. I don't know if this is a conflict, but uh, Dale Durbridge in a meeting of uh, a council meeting June 12th, Dale Durbridge asked, are you the foundation's attorney talking to you, Mr. Husbands, and SNS's attorney? That's gotta be a giant conflict. Since then, I've learned that you are SNS's attorney. You're also hired by the foundation to be their attorney. By the management board. Okay, I'm sorry. The, found, the management board hired you to be their attorney. Um, it was designed that Mr. Sears would be the uh, railroad attorney. Why the railroad spending extra money to hire more counsel, I don't know. You're also Mark and Joan Bass's personal attorney. SNS Railroad is in a contract with the city of Ely for um, car storage. For you to represent SNS Railroad and the management board, Seems like it should be a, a big uh, conflict to me. That I'm not sure about, but anyway, that's uh, that was just for informational purposes. Last question, last uh, issue. Oh, let me read this one too. This was from a February 25th meeting concerning pool pack. 
Trustee Westland stated the city does pay for the insurance and being that the railroad is intertwined with the city, it is important that the railroad follow a personnel manual that is in step with pool pack, except we're putting ourselves at risk if we do not do that. Like I said, that was March 27th. We haven't seen that personnel policy manual and it was promised. Last thing, I was at a meeting on July 16th and it, it was about uh, exempting the Club 50 um, crossing. After the meeting, Vic Crumley said to me, I think I seen cars at the Shafter uh, crossing. Mark walked past me and I said, Mark, did you hear about that? He says, yeah, I just found out. I said, can you find out about it and let me know? He said, sure, that was July 26th. I didn't hear nothing from Mark about the car storage. A couple days ago, I asked Roger Bowers about it. Understandably, very short time because I, I hadn't heard anything from Mark. So I drove out to Shafter. Um, never been there before. There was 58 cars stored there. I went to Google Earth on October 13, on October 3rd of 2013, and there was cars there stored. Mike Williams was here, I can't remember when, and we asked him about car storage, and he says there's been no activity for two years. What well, when was it? June 26th. June 26th. Um, I don't know if he was misleading us or not, I don't know. But the thing is, he's not letting the management board know, or the management board knows and didn't tell us. Um, maybe you can answer how much a day each car would, would give to the city, because I don't know. Anybody, you know? Nobody knows? It's in a contract. Um, This is out of the SNS contract. Payment. As consideration, the lease will be paid to revenue sharing between SNS and Ely at a rate of 25% of net revenue payable by SNS to Ely on a quarterly basis with accompanying accounting documentation. Additionally, SNS will provide Ely with copies of the manifest of each car that is being stored on its rail line so Ely may verify that no hazardous materials are being stored. On Google Earth, I can't tell. I, I could tell there were 16 cars. I can't tell if they were full. But if we were to get a quarterly report, we would know. And that wasn't done. All this questions that have been asked in the last eight months that we haven't got answered upsets me. I don't. I told Mark I don't care what happened prior to that. All the accusations. That's not what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with what happened since January um, of, of this year. Because I don't think that we'll ever get the answers quest, uh, questions answered. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because there's such a hatred for Marty that they're just not going to give us any answers that, that would appease Marty. I don't think the board is doing their job, and that's why I'm moving to remove the chairman of the board and the vice chairman of the board. John Gianoli and Keith uh, Steve Lee. That is correct. Thank you. That's my motion. Steve. Well, and that was going to be my first question. But let me. So you've answered my first question. Let me back up because you're. Is that a motion? That was a motion. Second. Am I entitled to speak now? Sure. That's up to that's up to Mr. Gerberich. And I think just. Quickly, I wanted to back up and cover this conflict of interest thing that you think is between my office and representing Mr. Bassett, Joan Bassett, SNS. Those issues and whether there's conflict or not are between my office and those clients. I can tell you that I've had discussions with them. We've all been in the same room and we said, look, here's the deal. You know, you guys are parties to the same contract. If there's ever an issue, I'd have to withdraw as counsel to both of you. I could never represent both of you. So there is no conflict of interest with respect to that representation. So, okay, that was just that's just the way Dale would ask the question, and I figured I might as well ask it too, so we can get some. That that leads me to a question, though, Scott. You're retained by SNS, yeah. and by the management board. 
All right. Thank you. Which I answered that question when so. Councilman Durbage asked it, and I'm saying again now there is no conflict of interest. The clients that are party to the representation have all signed off on it. Everybody is in agreement, so it, it's not a conflict of interest. But I guess the, moving on to the, the, the action. City, the city of Ely is also party to that contract. The city of Ely is not my client. So no, I understand. You have no say whatsoever in who I can represent and whether it's a conflict of interest or not. It's between SNS with respect to the SNS thing and the management board. The management board and SNS have said we're fine with, with the representation based on those qualifications. Same thing with Mark and Joan. I explained the same thing to them. I explained the same thing to Mr. Ginoli, the chairman of the management board. So those clients have all signed off on that thing. And there simply is no conflict of interest. Thank you. May I read a yes. letter? I wrote this this morning based on some things that I learned yesterday. Let me know if you can hear me back there. This will be a matter of public record. I'll talk with anybody about it. This is for me regarding the agenda item to remove one or two railroad management board members to whom it may concern. It is not my duty as a councilman to cast blame or search for impropriety. My concern is for the financial well-being of the city and its railroad. It is a fact, I repeat that, it is a fact that we are locked in a rail car storage agreement that threatens our city with simultaneously a crippling lawsuit and, according to public records, a debt in excess of $750,000. Our tourist railroad operation is in debt for many hundred thousand more. Looking down the road, our locomotives will require another one and a half million within the next three to five years to remain operational. My fellow councilman and I, acting on the advice of our auditors, insurers, and attorney, have tried for the past many months to define the true extent of our indebtedness, get a sense of how it was acquired, and devise a plan to address that liability. We can all agree that one or two or three million dollars is a lot of money for our community. Are we willing to forfeit our rails to a scrapper just to barter our way out of a bad contract? It was jointly poor management and look the other way councils that got us into this dilemma. The current council recognizes the danger and is struggling to eliminate this risk. Sadly, the management board has reacted to the city's concerns with indifference, slanderous attacks, and threats. Specific directives from the city have been blatantly ignored and direct questions go unanswered. They have armed themselves with their lawyer. They want the bylaws amended to give them control of the railroad with no effective city oversight. I can only puzzle at the cause of their degree of outrage. Assuming there has been no fiscal wrongdoing, then there is no monetary reward attached to the appointment of a railroad foundation manager. Perhaps it is simply the stress of the position, the financial responsibility, the demands on personal time that have cultured the level of criticism and disdain that has been directed toward this council. Whatever the cause is, this divisiveness must end. It is time to simply say with all sincerity, thank you for your service. We invite your continued involvement and support for our railroad, but it is time for fresh management. We have a new, thoughtful, concerned city council. It deserves to work with a new management board, one that will work hand in hand with the city to get all of us on a solid financial footing and secure our railroad for future generations to enjoy. So I think we need to here was one of my issues. I guess my first question would have been since the action item just says removal from office of up to two, which two? I guess we know which two now, but here would be my suggestion on how you could approach this differently. It would have been more helpful to know which two board members you were going to remove. I've been before this council on numerous occasions and we get criticized for documents being delivered late or some such thing. If we would have known who the two were, I mean that would have been kind of helpful, but that's beside the point. 
Um, if you'd like an answer, I'll tell you how I came with it. Well, you can turn for that. My original idea, my concern is to get answers. Besides what SNS, but besides what we owe SNS between 340 and 750, all numbers that I've heard, the railroad is also in debt $505,000 um, for their normal operating expenses, I guess. That's a, a, a figure Mark um, Bassett gave us on April 10th. That's for loans and if the, if the railroad was to fail or go bankrupt or whatever, all that money would be on the city. Possibly, well, probably well over a million dollars. So that's why the concern of get the, an the questions answered. My original was to, to do away with all the members because they're all as responsible as the top two. My goal was to get questions answered. Um, Mr. Uh, Sears came up with a better idea, or actually it was my idea, and I'm asking him uh, if this was a better idea. Two members. I was thinking of the last two, the bottom two uh, representatives. My goal is to get members on there so we can get the questions answered. I didn't think by getting, by removing the two bottom seniority uh, board members, they would just be steamrolled over. So I either had to get rid of three so that three new ones could be uh, told to find out the answers, or get rid of the top two that, that run the railroad board. And that's how I came up with the, the two names. It, it, it was very distressing because I do have a lot of respect for Mr. Ginoli especially, but I need answers. And eight months. And I, don't, I didn't have another idea of how to go about getting the answers. And I still might not get the answers. I'm hoping that whoever's appointed will take on these uh, questions and, and get them answered as soon as possible. And so the basis then, as long as I understand it, is your basis for removing them from office is that you have asked questions that you feel you have not received the answers to? Not that I feel they haven't received the answers. I know I haven't received the answers. I you know where you feel. You're representing SNS Shortline. Can you tell me how much S the city owes SNS Shortline? I just told you. I told you, you that told me approximately was, maybe. I did not say approximately. I said it will be forthcoming next week. He told me it will be $360,000 was the number he gave me. I doubt that he just said, you know, whatever. In his letter, he said he would give it to us. Well, you spent a lot of time talking about SNS, and the reason why I, was, I wasn't interrupting you, I was going to try and save everybody some time and just frustration. The question, it seems like everybody is just what is concerned about this debt that's owed by the city or by SNS to SNS. I think the question has been answered and the question will be answered when you receive your accounting. If you're unhappy with the accounting, then I guess you can ask for additional details or something like that. So set aside all of those things. What are the other questions you have that have been unanswered? I gave a whole bunch. I'm done. The motion's been made. It's been seconded. Second, is there any other discussion? Two weeks ago in my shop, I had a railroad volunteer come in, and this person said that he was instructed that if anybody that was employed or volunteer for the railroad spoke to any council member or myself or any member of the ad hoc committee, would possibly lose their job. Which unless, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but... You know. <laughs> So you've got a motion and a second to call for the question. All in favor? Aye. I abstain. A very a good friend in the business relationship with many people on the board. I can't agree. I'll adjourn this meeting. We'll turn it close. I should note that when I arrived here, there was a proxy statement that comes from the hands this is just requires a simple majority for proxies unnecessary. Okay. But I'd like to report it that in favor and against on the record. But the yeah. proxy will be in the in the record. record. Okay. Thank you. And I think it would be helpful to have whatever Councilman Sederstrom has in front of him if those are the things that are the basis for 
This is all, that's all public minutes. record. It's all public record. It's all minutes from. Okay, meetings. I just want to make sure there wasn't anything else in there. That no, public document no. Right the only two, the only two things I wasn't sure that you would have was the letter from Mike Williams, and uh, the letter from the auditors. So I made copies of them, and because it was a, a letter addressed to me, I was sure nobody got this one from the auditors. So. Want a copy of that? And there's a Jennifer, and she can make a copy. Yeah, there's ten of them there. Oh. Or, yeah, there's already copies. Yeah, there's, there's already copies made. So I did make sure I brought copies. Anything else for us? What was the historical railroad board of trustees? Start back from there. I will reconvene the regular city council meeting. Number seven, these are items for discussion. Possible action of the Ely City Council is recommended by the White Pine Historical Railroad Foundation Board of Trustees. Number one, Trustee Setestrom, this is a removal from office up to two White Pine Historical Railroad Foundation Management Board members for reason of cause. Mm -hmm. I make the same motion as I did in all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ms. Mayor, may I make a statement? Since I'm one of the people that apparently have been fired. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I did not know about this until this morning. I have not had an opportunity to consult with my family attorney, which is in Century City, California. And I would like at least an opportunity to talk to my own personal family lawyer. Thank you. City Council, Marty, have you heard? Uh, yes, just very, very quickly. Uh, it was a simply uh, no, not, nothing more than a, a simple mistake. Uh, there were some items that I uh, wanted placed on on the next agenda. I guess I could take it up at that time, but. Uh, I would just uh, reiterate that I'm getting more information daily from different states about exempting highway crossings. So I'm, I'm working diligently on that issue. Randy, anything? No report. No report. No report. I have a short one. I approve the closure of 4th Street August 1st for the Chamber's First Friday festivities. I also approve special event licenses for the following Sagebrush Quilt Field Show, August 1st to the 3rd, a Lions Club breakfast for September 20th, and a 24-hour liquor license to Jody Dunn for a marriage on August 23rd at the Nevada Northern Railroad Freight Barn. Number nine, agenda items for the next regularly scheduled city council meeting. Jennifer Lee has my list already. Uh, basically, stop sign at North and Stevens, uh, review the job description qualifications for director of public works, uh, update possible actions on what's going on with Parker Street deficiencies, and uh, asking the council how to proceed on the uh, exemption of the process. Public comment. Are there any comments? Madam Mayor, I wasn't going to say anything, but in defense of Mr. Jenkins, I and four other people were the founders of the McGill Root GID. We received over four and a half million dollars, of which nine hundred thousand dollars had to be paid back by the people. If these people who are asking for your people to take over their maintenance are erroneous. In the original agreement to get the millions of dollars which were came from Ronald Reagan and Paul Laxall in Washington, D.C., there was a stipulation in the original agreement that the GID had to have their own original maintenance department. They did say to deal it out, 
contracted out, they had to have their own maintenance department. So I think uh, in defense of Mr. Jenkins, we're putting a burden on him that shouldn't be put on. That's very important information. Thank you, John. Any more public comment? Good afternoon, Lynn Burley, and Mike Hart, I'm a Ely resident. Uh, I'd like to know how long Mr. Chatches has waited for answers to his questions. And number two, I've been waiting more than a year for a decision on the junkyard on Altman Street that belongs to one of your councilmen, and no action has been taken. Thank you. To say that I'm stunned would be an understatement. I was a volunteer here. The railroad had no money. There was no money, the doors were going to close. Mr. Stephen Leaf convinced me and my wife to come down here, give up our business up in Elko, to ensure that the Nevada Northern Railway National Historic Landmark, which this management board was able to secure under the leadership of John Giannoli, continued. When I took over, the books were so much in the red, it was pathetic. We're talking over a million dollars in the red. And slowly but surely, working incredibly hard, we have paid down that debt. We have repaired equipment. We have saved buildings. I pulled out a study. The study was from a civil engineer. And the civil engineer found that the engine house and the machine shop building should be condemned and that no one should be able to work in that building and anything of value should be removed from that building. Well, great. Where does someone suggest we store locomotives 40, 93, 81, the rotary, the steam crane? We were able to secure funding for that building to preserve that building. And when the structural engineer saw it the last time, he said that building will stand for 100 years. When Locomotive 93 went down because the improper crown brasses were ordered, it was John Giannoli who stood up and said, you know what, I will help the railroad here, and I will loan money to ensure that we have steam for 2009. Because of the efforts of the, master or the chief mechanical officer, I stand corrected, in 2007, we went through a year without steam that almost killed the railroad. We lost hundreds of thousands of dollars because the chief mechanical officer at the time said the axles on locomotive 40 were cracked and the locomotive couldn't operate. Oddly enough, there were no cracks in those axles. But you know what? Again, we survived. And in case you forgot, the country went through the Great Recession in 2008. The state museum system closed down to four days a week. State parks in Arizona were closed. What did we do here in Ely? We figured out a way to keep the place open seven days a week during the peak tourist season. Whenever that railroad needed money, whenever that railroad needed leadership, it was provided by John Giannoli, Steve Leaf, and the other management board members. They are volunteers who attend their meetings, Thank unlike you, the city council meeting did at the last ad hoc meeting, without you, giving us Thank an you very excuse. Much. You're very welcome, Mayor. Are there any other comments, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I have to speak for the railroad. I work for the railroad, uh, and at this time, at this time, I'm also a member of the Tourism and Recreation Board, which I'm going to speak on. That I know you're not saying shutting down the railroad. I'm, I'm not saying that. But you made a great error today. And that's my personal opinion. I'm not here as a commissioner. I'm an old fart that's been here for 74 years. The railroad is the crown jewel of tourism. 
People don't come to the Renaissance. People don't come to the art banks. They come to the railroad to go to the Renaissance and to the art bank. I want you to know that if anything happened to the railroad, tourism would lose 20 to 25 percent.